So, not the point of this video at all, but I'm so inspired, so I just have to share. I just got back from a second meeting with Marissa Bethany, who's the founder of a skincare brand, Precious Skin Elixirs. We just met for like two hours over coffee and then we went to Full Lane. As soon as I got to the coffee shop to meet Marissa, I saw that she was reading this book. It totally made me remember how I bought this book like six, seven, eight years ago. Actually, I can see I did some highlighting, but it was too intense for me at the time. I just like wasn't really like grasping everything that was in here. It was too dense. So seeing her read it totally re-inspired me to pick it back up. Then when we were in Folane, I decided to pick up one of my favorite random products, the Intelligent Nutrients Certified Organic Hand Sanitizer. Just like a little one-off thing I decided to buy because I love it so much. And then Marissa was so kind to give me yet another product from her line to try that she really wanted me to try. This is the Peridot Cleansing Balm, a nourishing and calming botanical oil cleanser. And I have to say, before I had met her and had, was just sort of researching the brand, this was probably the product I was most intrigued by because I love cleansers and I love balm cleansers in particular. So I will be trialing this for the first time tonight, but oh my goodness. Oh, smells incredible. Now keep in mind that this is a luxury price point. It's I think $120 balm. I mean, it's labeled as a cleansing balm. You can also use it as a face balm. I didn't have as much success with her 24 karat balm, which I've also been trying. Anyway, just a couple of random things I wanted to share and just also gush about how amazing it was to sit down with her and I don't know, just be, you know, open and honest and, and say how we're feeling and not worry about being so politically correct and not offending people. And um, yeah, I just, as, especially as I move through the process that I'm moving through, connecting with people that really seem to get it and feel the same way has been uh, just really invaluable. So I'm very thankful for Marissa. Now let's move into the products that I was really enjoying during April. I realized that we're already decently into May. So I was like, should I even still do this? But here I am doing it. And I guess this is, this will just be a nice segue. I want to mention my favorite Precious Skin Elixirs product that I've tried. Oh my gosh. I don't think I felt this sort of gushy and amazing about a product in quite a long time. And it's her Sterling Honey Polish. I'm about to make a bold statement. This has replaced my love and effusiveness that I used to have from Mahalo's The Petal. As you know, that was like my top product of 2016. And I just have been really, uh, I guess, really quite disappointed in, I apparently it was not a reformulation. It was just a swap out of some ingredients or the source of the same ingredient. I'm not exactly sure. Suffice to say that product just has never performed the same on my skin as the initial batch that I had, which truly breaks my heart. But from the minute that I opened this product and put it on my skin, I was obsessed. I think maybe I just need to do a full video like demoing it and showing it. It's a $90 price point, which is expensive, but I, of everything I've tried from Precious Skin Elixirs, to me, this would be so worth the investment. Um, it's like the same price point as a, as a mask like the petal. This is like mind, body, energy, everything. And it's topically so beneficial on my skin. I find it to be gently exfoliating, uh, moisturizing, hydrating, calming, toning. It's kind of like, it's a hero product to borrow a genie term. So I'm, I've been adoring this. This is probably my favorite product of all of the last month since I got it. Two other products right up in there in terms of obsession um, skincare wise have been these two products from Virid or Verid Botanicals. I think I alternate how I say it, Virid. I think I mostly say Virid. I have the anti-aging treatment face oil and the herb infused toner. This I think is really nice if you're someone that doesn't wash your face in the morning but you want something that's just sort of like a refresh. This can actually sort of stand in as a non-soap, non-water face wash. You could sort of dispense it onto a cleansing pad and sort of do it that way. I don't like to do that because I find that the, the 
little cotton pads soak up too much product and it's like so precious that I want to just put it all on my skin. So I usually just pump some directly into my hand. As you can see, it's not like a traditional like spray dispenser the way a lot of hydrosols are. It's a, a pump. Um, so I just pump into my hands and apply on my skin and I've been adoring it. It's a bright pink color because of the hibiscus that's in it. It has um, essential oils and then a bunch of herbs like chickweed, calendula, nettles, echinacea, lemongrass, orange grapefruit, horsetail, chamomile, hibiscus, lavender, orange, lemon. I mean, wow, it keeps going. Uh, it's in a base of organic grape alcohol, distilled water, and vegetable glycerin. So. I mean, I have found it to be incredibly beneficial and refreshing to my skin in the morning, and I find it to be very uh, nourishing and protective as a part of my evening skincare routine. Now, pretty much the only two face oils I've been using at night for the last like month to even two months have been the Virid Anti-Aging Treatment Face Oil and Stark's Midnight Face Oil. So these have both been really big favorites. If you wanna hear more about this, you can check out my Stark brand overview, but literally it's like I just alternate every other night. I'll do one of these oils. By the way, I just made a list in my bullet journal for my face oil serum lineup video. I haven't done a lineup video in a while, but I feel really inspired to do a face oil video. So the Virid Anti-Aging Face Oil so first of all, once you pump the product into your hand before you apply it to your face, she does recommend that you take like, like a huge deep breath in to inhale sort of the really complex layered scents of her products. Virid has 27 plus years of experience as an herbalist and an esthetician, so she really knows her stuff. The closest brand that it sort of reminds me of is Infiore, but it's it's different. Infiore is more like floral perfumery and Vera is more like herbal, herbal therapy, I guess. Maybe similar to Laurel, but it has a bit more of a chic elegance to it. Whereas Laurel feels a little bit more like wholesome. I don't know. These are just like the, the word associations I have in my brain. None are better than the other. They're just different. Um, so the scents that I get from this face oil are coffee, vanilla, citrus, and jasmine. It's so incredible and I find it to be just really beautiful on my skin. I find that I wake up with really beautiful calm skin when I use this and Midnight. They have similar effects on my skin. I would say that Stark Midnight is sort of more grounding whereas Virid Anti-Aging makes me feel more actually like open in a way, a kind of, uh, energized is not really fully the right word, but I think what this does is it helps with energy balance and flow. I think Virid had told me at one point that this product assists in uh, sort of rebalancing chakras uh, just from the aromatherapy of the balance of the ingredients. She does also do a, a balancing face oil that's more for oily combo acne prone skin types. I've actually heard honestly great things about that too um, from friends of mine that do deal with more acute acne. Maybe I'll talk more about it comparatively speaking to other things I've tried in my face oil lineup video which I'll try and do in like the next couple of weeks. So as far as makeup, neither of these is new but I've really been liking this as my base. This is the RMS Uncover Up in 11. And I've been loving applying it with a flat kabuki brush. This is the Trish McAvoy 76 Perfect Foundation Brush. You know, it's a little bit big, but I do just kind of like dab it in there and sort of stipple press it on my skin. And then I blend that in with a beauty blender and it gives really amazing coverage. The Uncover Ups actually have a surprising amount of pigment to them. You know, I'm very much like a light to medium coverage preference person, but, and I don't know how I'm gonna do with this in the summertime as a base, it'll probably be a little bit too heavy and I'll want something slightly more mattifying. But for where we kind of have been at as far as transitioning from winter into spring, spring into summer, this has been like a fantastic spring base. Uh, I do have a new product favorite. This is the Becca Aqua Luminous uh, Perfecting Concealer in the shade Light. 
I was desperately in need of a new concealer. Um, I personally like concealers that are in either this sort of packaging or click pens. I do think a lot of click pen concealers are overpriced and I think you're a lot of times you're paying for the dispensing mechanism and they also tend to not be of the highest coverage. For a while I was considering the beauty counter click pen but you know I have to be honest beauty counter as an MLM I don't know I don't I don't love that sort of business model honestly. It's the same as like doTERRA, Young Living, they're all MLM style companies and not to you know disparage it and if that's your thing or if you're a rep for them that's great. Anyway I decided to go for the Becca one um, just in terms of kind of trying to strike a balance between performance and pigmentation and uh, you know its ability to last on the skin just perform the way that I want a makeup product to perform at the level that I want, and ingredients. And so of everything that I was looking at, I, I basically scoured the concealers carried on Beauty Habit, and they carry a lot of natural brands. You know, I haven't had the best success with eco concealers. Trust me, I've tried them all. Truthfully, they just don't really perform the way that I want a concealer to perform. So the ingredients and the price point and everything was just a really great combination for me with this and I've been super duper happy with it. It's a great color match for me. I find it to be nice and brightening. I find it to be moisturizing. I find it to set but not settle in lines. Um, it's just a great product. I'm really enjoying it. However, why is Chrissy Teigen doing a makeup collaboration with Becca? Can someone tell me why we care about her? This has been like on my mind since I saw that yesterday. Like basically what I know about Chrissy Teigen is that she was a Sports Illustrated model, swimsuit model, and she's married to John Legend. Now I'm sure that there's a lot more to her than that, but why is she like a relevant person in the cosmetics industry? You know obviously celebrity makeup collaborations are not anything new and you know there's every Kardashian and Jenner under the sun I feel like has cosmetics lines, but when I saw the Chrissy Teigen Becca thing I was like it was just so random to me it would be like someone that really has like nothing to do with makeup or beauty like having a makeup collaboration like I just don't get it <laughs> why I'm moving to a commune as far as face makeup my favorite makeup product of late has been the Au Naturel cream blush in the shade pink champagne this came in the Beauty Heroes makeup box recently, and it's like a dead ringer dupe for NARS Orgasm, and I really have been enjoying it. I'm wearing it today. I like it lightly dusted over a cream bronzer and then blended in with a beauty blender, and I don't have to wear highlighter when I do that, so I've been loving that. That's my favorite item from the makeup box. And then I have two lip favorites one of which is actually an empty product. This is the Bite Beauty Matte Lip Crayon in the shade Tort. I have been like obsessed with this color on my lips. I guess it's just like such a pretty transitional shade from winter into spring. So I actually need a replacement. I'm thinking I wanna get Pastille because I don't think they make a full size of Tort. I think Pastille's quite similar to this from everything I've seen and I love the Bite Matte Lip Crayon formula. And I am happy to share with you that this was part of the Bite uh, holiday mini set from two years ago. I have now finished three of them. Aubergine, which I have a full size of, Cafe, which was like a very light milky pink, and now Tort. The only one I have left, and I have about half of it left, is Coulee, which is like a bright holly red. I actually wore it earlier this week and I really love that too. And then my other lip favorite this month has been Charlotte Tilbury Lost Cherry. This is a matte revolution lipstick. So this has been if I want to do a bright lip. It's like a bright cherry coral. Perfect for spring and summer. Super happy with the formula. Really obsessed. I might spring for Love Liberty or Glastonbury in the fall because the formula is so good on these. Love lifestyle favorites some of which are sort of random like these okay but hear me out these are 
this like very thick type of glass storage. So I learned about these from the Detoxinista blog. I love Megan Gilmore's cookbooks and blog. I've followed her for years. And she had these uh, listed as sort of like a food storage option. Um, I'm a big fan of Pyrex and glass storage, mason jars, all of that. But when I saw these, I just thought they looked really, really handy great for food storage or freezer storage um, and things like that. And they actually come in a smaller size, which I just ordered. I'll link them below. I'm pretty sure the brand is Luminarch, French brand, very high quality. They have excellent reviews. I just am like totally jazzed about this kind of thing, which totally speaks to my demographic. Then I know I've mentioned this before, but I'm obsessed with it. It's the Captain Blankenship New Moon Smokeless Smudge Spray. I am like, a th I guess a third, almost a half done. I don't always have time or honestly really the desire to actually burn Palo Santo or sage in my apartment because, you know, it can get smoky and be intense. This is just like perfect daily energy space upkeep. It's the equivalent of by Neve's Cloud of Protection, although, I mean, they're a little bit different. I keep Cloud of Protection at work, and I keep this smokeless smudge spray here at home. I guess because I prefer to have kind of the more, like, immunity-boosting essential oil, like, uplifting smells of Cloud of Protection at work, and I prefer to have, like, the sagey Palo Santo smells at home. But yeah, I'm totally addicted to this. If anyone has comparable products i would like to branch out and try other like palo santo or smokeless smudge sprays i know that they're like becoming very common um also i'm not into diy of this kind of thing even though i'm sure that it's quite easy to do i just don't really want to honestly so if you know of or have a favorite brand of something like this i'm gonna probably continue to buy this but i would like to try other ones as well and then along the same lines, and I mentioned this in my Max and Me review video, I have been working with some new Oracle decks. Oracle decks are slightly different than tarot decks. I mean, I don't even, I mean, I'm no expert, but tarot decks, I think, follow a particular patterning generally. I mean, they don't have to, but for example, the Rider Waite tarot deck, which is like the most classic traditional tarot deck, has like a pre-formulated like deck of cards and with oracle decks they're like less structured i guess in a way but they are also divination tools if i feel like i need guidance or if i'm kind of feeling stuck and i need to move energy or it, they're basically like a self-development tool i guess or a self-knowingness tool and you can think of them as a tool to make you conscious of aspects of yourself or aspects of situations you encounter in life make you more conscious of the underlying pattern or energy or lesson or whatever i don't use them as much to divinate which would mean to like tell the future basically or make decisions or predict things, speculate about events, um, they can be used for that. I, I, At this point, I still prefer to go to other people to read those sorts of things for me because it's really hard to be um, objective if you're reading that way for yourself. But I like to have them to just like pick a card or do like a quick three card spread. Like for example, we'll just do like a quick pull now. This is the uh, Wisdom of Avalon tarot deck. And I will save my insights into Druidism and Paganism and Neo-Druidism and all of that, which is my jam for another video. But that's why I ended up buying this deck. I'm just gonna pick a random card. And I just picked the High Priestess. Which is actually also a card in the traditional like Rider Waite tarot deck. The words on the card are discernment, prescience, prophecy, and vision. So if I were to pick this card and they weren't on camera, I would just think like, okay, is this the energy that I'm embodying right now? Is this the energy that wants to be embodied right now? Or you can think of them sort of like as archetypes, situations in your life that are sort of calling forth this sort of energy to be present. I feel like I could start going off on like so many tangents about this stuff, but 
just wanted to give you like a little basic idea of how I work with them. It's more sort of detailed and personal than that and it's different for everybody. And then I also got the Druid Animal Oracle deck. Um, if you know anything about Druidism, it's very much about connecting with nature and animals um, as a way to access spirit. I also thought these cards were just really lovely and beautiful. They feel really nice too. So I kind of want to do like a pull here too to see what I come up with. And I just pulled the bear. This makes me think of Clan of the Cave Bear. Did anybody read that? Let's see, there's like a little, these decks tend to come with um, like little guides to them. So let's see what the bear, the bear is actually a really powerful animal totem I know, Clan of the Cave Bear. Seriously, comment and tell me if you read all those books. I was obsessed with them. I think I've actually mentioned them on my channel before. I was obsessed with Ayla. I wanted to like be a medicine woman. I wanted to like meet my own John Delar. I was like obsessed. Okay, so the bear, oh, this is interesting. Primal power, sovereignty, and intuition married with instinct. The bear connects you with the very deepest of your ancestral roots. Here you are in touch with the primal mother, the bear goddess Artio, Arshio, who will defend you fiercely from all danger. So it's kind of also like the protection theme that was coming up in my Max and Me video. You are connected also with the bear god Artaus. I don't know what language these are. The mighty warrior Arthur, the guiding pole star of the great bear. Your intuition will never fail you if you will listen to it in the still darkness of the night. Working with the bear gives you the opportunity to become a spiritual warrior, like Arthur. This is kind of giving me chills. You can find the way to come into your power by marrying your strength with your intuition. Integrating your primal power with your intuition means uniting your star power with your animal power, and both are symbolized by the bear. Oh man, just kind of made my day. There are so many different oracle decks one can get. Um, like if you go into a new age shop or you search for them on Amazon, my best advice is to just literally go with what you feel drawn to. Start with one or two and go from there. There's like no rules really to doing this kind of stuff. Other quick lifestyle favorites. Vert Nouveau, the Green Beauty Paradigm Shift Facebook group that Jess from Stark Skincare and I have jointly started and been moderating has been another favorite as that sort of came to fruition this month. I've been really happy with the conversations happening on there. If any of you are on the Green Beauty Insiders Facebook group, but sometimes the same like article or piece will be posted on that board and our board. It's just very interesting to see how different the conversations are and just seeing where people are at. They're at Nouveau, it's, it's a much more critical look at a lot of these things. and. Yeah, we are saying that the green beauty industry is full of fear mongering because it is. And I think that there's still like a bit of defensiveness and 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 sort of pushback against those criticisms in the it's so funny, mainstream green beauty community now. Cause that's almost kind of how it feels. <laughs> I'm probably like saying too much and I don't like that I feel like I'm going to get attacked for saying these things, but I do feel like there's a schism in the community. It's going to be interesting to see where it goes. As far as music, I will put a playlist together for you and have it as an embedded playlist on my blog. I had a huge moment with John Coltrane randomly this month. I am obsessed. I've been obsessed with jazz. I mean, honestly, probably my whole life. I didn't really grow up with it per se, but I've I just always loved jazz. You know how some people really love classical music? I really love jazz music. I love classical music too, but I'm more of a jazz person. I was listening to a lot of Miles Davis in the winter, and then I just got had gotten to a huge John Coltrane moment. So I've been listening to Giant Steps on repeat, and then I've been in a very... Um, I feel like the playlist that I have is quite pensive. So all of the tracks in my playlist I've had for a while. So my music selections for this month were more of like a shopping my library sort of thing and just things that came up on shuffle or that I rediscovered. So my number one track of the whole month is by a drum and bass producer, LTJ Bukum or Bukum. And it's a track called Mood Swings and it like literally I went through some 
transcendent portal of like opening or like energy shift when it came up on shuffle and I have had it in my library for so long and when I heard it I was just melted into an Amelie puddle it was so beautiful so I've been listening to that on repeat um, I had a big moment with air in particular the track all I need off moon safari I know a lot of people watching probably also really love air you know they're sort of old school at this point but their sound is to me really classic and also such an interesting um, forerunner to other sort of down-tempo, lo-fi, trip-hop sorts of uh, artists that I really liked in the 2000s, like Zero Seven and Nightmares on Wax, who's also on my list. Yeah, I'm gonna cut myself off now in this video, but I will see you guys in another video really soon. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what your favorite products have been, any thoughts you wanna share, I try and respond to as many comments as I can. I'm so appreciative for your continued support and taking the time to watch my videos. If you have any video suggestions or things you want to see, you can always feel free to let me know, although I do have a very long running list. Um, but I'm really thankful for you always and come over to Vert Nouveau and be part of the green beauty paradigm shift. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye. May encounter many defeats, but it was not defeat. That in fact, it may be necessary to encounter defeats so we can know who the hell we are.